are back 10 years and beyond the standpoint rebranding and um, welcome to our new studio yeah look around this is our new studio and um, we are so excited to be sharing it with you welcome to a program with new segments with new insights with new faces exciting stories experiences follow up where have they been those who've been on the program before said the experience what has changed about it's going to be an exciting journey and we hope you're going to go along with us we'd like to say thank you to all those who supported us in the past 10 years and those who supported us during our 10th anniversary activities well my name has still hasn't changed it's still ordinary gifty auntie but let me say thank you to the paramount chief of Manya Krobo, that's Nene Sakite the second, and the Paramount Queen Mother, Nana Aplam the second. Thank you so much for honoring me with the title Yokama 2018. Yokama meaning the ideal woman, meaning the virtuous woman. I don't come from the Manya Krobo area, but apparently somebody was watching. And it was a surprise. I went there as a special guest of honor, as a guest speaker. And then my name was mentioned to come for the honor. Of course, my colleague, so Yoko Kwakutre, was also honored. She comes from the, those areas. So I thought I was sharing her on. And then my name was mentioned as well. Thank you so much. And thank you to my husband, Nana Ansakwa, for gracing me. Yeah, not the occasional. He just... Make sure I appeared in all the royalty. Make sure I dress appropriately for the function and then gave me all the necessary royal and traditional protocols. I salute you, sir. Thank you so much. Now, with that out of the way, welcome to the new season of The Standpoint 2018. Last quarter to 2019 is going to be exciting. Today, we are opening the season with a major topic. Who is a total woman? Who is a holistic woman? We say that the standpoint, we seek to empower women holistically. These past few years, past few months, past few weeks, days, there's been confusion. An empowered woman, is it possible to be married, have a successful marriage, be able to, let's say, make sacrifices and compromises in your marriage just to keep your marriage? Or the empowered woman is a no nonsense, you mess up one time, you are gone, kind of. Is the empowered woman the one who can keep a good home, good job, empower others, impact on lives, progress, achieve her dreams, raise God fearing children, children to become achievers? Ha, <sighs> is that too much to ask of a woman? Well, we take a break. When we come back, I introduce my guests because I have the right people to open our eyes to who the woman is. The woman that God created us to be. Who is she? We'll be back. Welcome to the standpoint. It's good to be back in the studio and sitting behind the table and deliberate on issues, hitherto taboo topics. We've been doing this for 10 years, but there's still a lot 
that we need to talk about. A lot that we need to get our hands dirty around so we can get to where we want to go as women. The Standpoint 10 Years and Beyond. Welcome to our new studio. Welcome to our new segment. Welcome to new faces. Welcome to new ideas. And welcome to new fights and struggles and challenges and solutions and what have you. Today we are going to have an interesting discussion and I'm sure you understand that it's worth your while. So don't go anywhere. If none of your friends has tuned in, please call them. Find out who is watching, who is not watching, because it's going to be exciting. Let me say thank you to GTP for my cloth. My dress was made for me by Ophelia Crossland Designs. My beats by Sun Beats. All women. Yeah? Headed by women. Okay? So thank you to Paba Cosmetics. Also owned by a woman. Ghanaian woman. Yes, Papa Cosmetics. Yes, yeah, she gives us the makeup products and makeup and more. Gloria is here. Also a woman. Woman power. Yes, we are back to do it all over again. But around the table, I have three powerful, amazing women. I met them during the break, you know, during the activities, the, the 10th anniversary activities. And I knew that they are the ones that need to open the comebacks episode of The Standpoint. So seated. At the extreme left is the woman we call Mrs. D. She is a Mrs. Audrey Dorumo. She is the head of school, Association International School. Yes, she is. And she is a co-founder of Ghana, Ghanaian Women Empowerment Network. Gwen, I'm sure you've heard about If you haven't, wait, at the end of this program, go and Google, you'll find out about them. Welcome to the Stanford, Mrs. D. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Seated right next to her is Reverend Dr. Susan Inti. She is the, she's a minister and head of secondary Association International School and also an executive member of Ghanaian Women Empowerment Network. Welcome, Doc. Thank you. Next to Dr. A.T. is um, Judith Ishen. She is a business administrator and a member, right, yes. of Gwen, right? Yes. Good to have you in the studio with us. Mrs. G, how long have you been married? <laughs> wow, I think 37 years. 37 years. Mm -hmm. And, and it's still, still going strong. <laughs> and I'm enjoying it even better. I can tell. I know. You should see <laughs> Mr. D. I salute. I <laughs> greet you this evening. You know, you have kids. Yes. <clears throat> You're married. You have kids. You're a professional woman. I have grandchildren. You have grandchildren too. You don't look at... You're a professional woman. You have hobbies. You have friends. You have... You're a co-founder of Gwen. Mm -hmm. How can you do all these things and still be happily married as a woman? Is it possible to have it all together? Because an empowered woman should not take certain, forgive my French, nonsense from a man. Have to make compromises. I like the, the raise of your eyebrow. <laughs> First and foremost, I always say that a strong man wears pink. And um, my husband wears pink, by the way. Um, <laughs> he's a strong man. Yeah. He allows me to be who God has ordained me to be. Mm. He's very supportive of, you know, what I want to do. We discuss everything. As I say, he's the wind behind my sail. Mm. Um, he is my sounding board. He's also my fiercest critic and supporter um, and um, we've always been partners in everything that we've done um, he's the quiet one I'm the outgoing one but we complement each other and I thank God that God gave me such mm. a man mm. um, you can have it all but mm. you need to discuss it with your partner you have to have a strong person and a good person and a supportive person who will, 
you know, understand what your dreams are and help you to forge those dreams. Dr. N.D., Reverend Dr. N.D., I saw your DP. It was you and your husband. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 30 years of marriage. Yes, on Monday. Monday yeah. 30 years. And 30 years. You still going DP. strong by yeah. grace. Yeah, and Reverend. You, you, you're a lawyer, right? Yes, yeah, you, 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 you're a trainer. Yes. Yeah, you had a secondary school. Yes. You, you, you ordained I, ministers. Yes. You, you do so many things. Yes. This is a strong woman. What do you need a man on your, uh, by your side to sh sh show on your DP for people to know that you have a man in your life? Aren't you belittling, aren't you belittling who you are as a woman and as an accomplished woman? I don't think so. I think it's, um, it just shows that you can have it all. You can be married. You can have a career. You can have, um, you know, I have seven degrees only because I studied while my children were growing up and I had a responsible husband who brought in the bacon, as they say, mm -hmm. you know. So really, I remember going for a job interview, you know, in my... Okay, hold on a second. You have what, how many? Seven degrees? Yes. Okay, it just sounds good. Okay. All right. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. I ju it just means that I love to learn, and I'm always <laughs> learning. Even, you know, working as head of secondary, I'm still learning. You mm. know, I have a fantastic, uh, you know, mentor here, okay. and I'm still learning, it's a le life is le about learning and you mm. need to be willing to learn. Um, but I remember when, you know, I was already a lawyer before I got married, mm. um, but I had to make choices and, you know, I had to th question myself, what was more important for me, a family and a marriage or a career? You know, and at the time, you know, I had, you know, I was a assistant solicitor w looking after an office you know, I'm, I, that, it doesn't mean everything has gone great in my life. I've made some really bad errors of judgment and, you know, some mistakes. But I had to make a choice. What is most important for me? Do I want to be a career lawyer or did I want a marriage and a family? And I made the decision. I said, no, I want a marriage and I want a family. Mm. And so because of that, I was prepared to move back in that field, you know, I had already had a case in the Court of Appeal in the UK, mm -hmm. you know, and people would say, wow, that was great. You know, I was, but there were things that I wanted in my life. So I was prepared to take some steps back to get what, you know, would fulfill me. And I remember- and this was a decision you made. Yes, I made. Okay. I made because I could have shut that door, door yeah. and said, you know, I just want to be the hottest top lawyer right. ever, you know, and there were decisions that I, I made. Am I going to follow my career or am I going to, to allow that. somebody to come into my life and make a life with them? You know, and I made that decision that I'm going to do that. And I haven't looked back mm. 30 years um, since. This is where you have to be in agreement, mm. talking about the power of agreement. And, you know, there were so many things that we did without because we, we had to compromise in terms of what we would and wouldn't do. Like my husband had to make a decision with me that, you know, I'm, I am a cons management consultant, but, and I could work all around the world. I could fly in and out, but because of my family and because we had four young kids, right. I'm, I'm going to work close to home. And you know, God was so good because we moved into a, a, a city and I used to go take the kids to school and every time we used to pass the open university I used to tell the kids dad's gonna get a a, a, a job here and you know even because he was traveling to London it. I said it and we prayed about it and the job opening came as a, a marketing director and um, I sent his CV it was a big <laughs> fight I tell you you said I it. sent his CV <laughs> and you know it was like now you want to tell me what job to do and he went for the interview and he got the job. He became the head of Open Africa for the Open University. Then he became the international director for Africa and Asia. Let me tell you women, that power of agreement is amazing. It's amazing. 
and, and just to say, I have never seen any woman who has sacrificed for her husband and her family in terms of an agreement that God does not fast track eventually. Mm. So when, you know, the children are, we cry. It's, it's a crying experience because you lose your name. They don't even know your name is Suzanne or mm. Audrey or mm. Judith or Gifty. Gifty. It's like this person's mother. I was Rocky's mother, a <laughs> man's mother. Yeah. I had no name for about 10 years. And I was like the housekeeper, you know, and you put everything on the back burner just to be the wife and the mother that you're supposed to be. That is the highest ministry. Mm -hmm. The world tries to tell us that because there's no financial value to it, you are not mm -hmm. being paid for it, mm -hmm. that there is no value. But that is the highest ministry that a woman can be called to. Let me take a break. When we come back, I'll come to Judith. Judith. I believe you've learned a lot from these two women. A lot. Uh, me too. I'm putting myself in there. <laughs> I'm now stuck with them. I'm not leaving any moment, uh, you know, soon. Anyway, you're watching the stand. Let me say thank you to House of Foods for supporting us. Go got yogurt, Casa Preco Company Limited. They give us the royal drinks and awake purified water. Awake purified water. Any bottle you buy, they contribute a percentage, one Ghana peso, to the. Um, National Cardiothoracic Fund, which goes to help children in need who can't pay for surgeries. So please, awake. Don't, don't, don't. It's good water, purified water, and then you also indirectly contribute to saving somebody's life. So it's very, very important. Thank you to Yep Cleaning Services, who keep our environment clean, and Cake Technique, who always make sure that my guests are refreshed. We take a break. We'll be back. That this is going to be a program. Well, hmm, we could do part one, two, three, four, and five with this one. But welcome back again. I say thank you to GTP for my cloth. My dress was sewed for me by Ophelia Crossland Designs, makeup products by Paba Cosmetics. Thank you so much for staying with us. And makeup and more apply the makeup. My beats by Sunbeam um, Beats. They are at Adenta. Thank you so, 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 so much. We are grateful to all of them. Now, make up and more, apply the makeup for us. I've told you that already. But Judith, sorry for, you know, I, I just couldn't leave it come I to understand. you. But thank you so much. Tell me a bit about you. Okay. You're, all I know is that you're a businesswoman. <laughs> well, let me start that I'm a mentee. Okay. To my lovely mother's here. Oh, okay. And um, yes, um, I'm a businesswoman. Not the trader type, but uh, more of clerical. Okay. Okay. And um, I'm single. And uh, I You're single? Then you're not a total woman. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm single, but not searching. Okay, good. I'm just, you know, the, the, the Reverend, I know, I know, <laughs> Reverend should have seen the look on Reverend Dr. <laughs> because in our society, and I, I hope you understand where I'm coming from, in our society, a woman, if you are not married, you don't have a child, then you are not fulfilled. a total woman, you are not complete, you are not fulfilled, that is what our perception is. Okay, if I have to cut in, maybe mm -hmm. if I had been... Um, a wife and a mother earlier than this time, I may have been a lousy mother or maybe a lousy wife. So <laughs> or, or maybe you'd have been an abused. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so um, I thank God for my life. I thank God for who I am today. Okay. And um, I've, I've become wiser mm -hmm. to face tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I've found myself in circles of experienced woman yeah. now so all in all i would say it's but been good would you say that as a young woman and i take it that you're a young woman you know living in our environment now it's sometimes confusing yes. as a woman 
to the choices that you have to make. Yes, of course. Um, I was relieved when Dr. Susan said, uh, Dr. N.T. said that uh, she'd made mistakes. We all sometimes make mistakes, but you learn from it. So, yeah. Again, I would have been lousy. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned now. You know so, a lot yes, more now. Yes, and uh, I think um, emotionally stable and mm. um, psychologically prepared for mm. tomorrow. Mm. Better than I was a few years back. Mm. Mrs. G, that's something that I also personally realized that I had to work on, work really hard on. And I believe lots of women will have emotional intelligence. Work on emotions yes. as a woman. Yes. Um, I'm going to tell you a story. When I first got married, I was very young. I got married at 24. I planned my marriage. I wanted to get married at 24. Mrs. I, to... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I got married at 24. I planned I'd have my kids early so that I'd be able to, you know, do whatever I wanted to do. Mm. And um, in my young age, getting married as a young woman uh, to my husband, um, we had to go through a lot in order to find the balance in our relationship. Um, as, as Susan said, you make mistakes, but you learn from those mistakes. And then God opens ways for you that you will be able to, you know, find what you're supposed to do. Mm. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's been good. You, you grow gracefully. You grow old gracefully. Right. And, and so don't be in a hurry. Yeah, yeah. Just get, garner all the experience that you can get. And then, that's to you young women too. Yeah. And then make the decision and make sure that you find a man who compliments you. Marriage is not a bed of roses. It has its thorns. Now why do we say that marriage can make and unmake you? If it's not supposed to, I should go to Dr. Inti, right? Yeah, yeah. You, you know, marriage <laughs> was made, is a, a, comes from the mind of God. And God, marriage is a divine institution, something that God created. And when he created marriage, he was, if you read the Bible, it talks about marriage being a reflection of the church and Christ. You know, there are certain things in the mind of God that are, are different. He, we don't think, being human, we don't think the way God thinks. Mm -hmm. It's like this ring. Now, I've put this ring on my finger, and anytime you see this ring, it's a symbol. You know that, oh, there's somebody else in my life, yeah. right? So it's a, it's a symbol. And marriage is a spiritual, it's a physical symbol of something spiritual, so when you get married to somebody, it's two separate people coming together as one unit. And that's how God sees them. So marriage hasn't got a problem. Mm. These separate people are the ones who might have the problems, but not marriage. Mm. Marriage is intended to be a reflection of the agreement and the unity, the order that is from God. And you, we all know that that kind of agreement can only come by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not by your power, you know. Oh sex doesn't bring that unity. Mm -hmm. Some people think, oh, if I sleep, you know, sleep with him, then everything will be all right. No, it won't. If you had problems before your sex, it'll, there will be problems after your sex because problems and conflict need to be resolved. But there's some who feel that Especially among married couples, when there's a problem and once you have sex, that's it. It's broken. Everything you is solved. Can, yes, you can have sex, but it, it affects communic. You know, we have to communicate. And, and you not communicating about the things that you feel. I'm not happy with this. You know, we need, what I found with a lot of women is we have not been taught by our mothers mm. how to communicate. Mm. Like John... That really was not what I expected you to do. I don't like to be spoken to like that. When you want to speak to me, 
Can you talk to me, sit down with me and explain to me? You know, we have not been taught how to have a dialogue with the opposite sex. There's a lot of myths and a lot of everything swept under the carpet. Oh dear, yeah, oh dear, and Kashi, mm -hmm. don't say anything. Oh dear, bomb pie. You know, we have not been taught yeah. to, to talk and to communicate. Like, sweetheart, mm -hmm. I did not like the tone of your voice when you spoke to me. Next time, can you make sure that you don't speak to me like that? Because every time you do that, I feel like this. Mm -hmm. And you should, women, come on. God has given us this intuition, has given us this ability that men don't have. You should know when you can approach your husband and, and, and be able to. Any, just any time. And just talk. any time. Have you should know wait. when. You, you, you know, you have to know just exactly before. that time. Just before <laughs> the, the, the foreplay begins. Exactly. That's yeah. the time and you, you sit buddy down and say, darling, sweetheart, you, know you remember? You know the time Don't give it and then you, you, just, yeah, you, you know. have to pick so, your moment. So. <laughs> <laughs> pick your moment. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> when somebody's mind is on something, Anything that you will say yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know, a truth. And you, and you need to be able to stroke their egos and, and to let them know that they are cared for, that you love them, you care about them, and that you are the you are the you are, the, you are the, their biggest fan. <sighs> let me take another break. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll be back. Uh, once again, thank you to House of Foods, Google Got Yogurt, um, Casa Precon Purified, um, Awake Purified Mineral Water, and um, Royal Drinks. Thank you to Yep Cleaning Services, Cake Technique, and who else? Everybody. Thank you. I'm in a hurry. <laughs> okay, Judith, how did you find out about Ghanaian Women Empowerment Network? Uh, Dr. Inti and I are friends on Facebook. Okay. So he, she posted the link. And I followed, and that was it. <laughs> but why did you want to follow? There's so many women's groupings on Facebook and other social media platforms. Why that one? Okay. <laughs> Should I spill it? No. Something no, happened. I want from you. Yeah, huh. Okay, something you happened. Yeah. Um, and uh, actually, I, I, was, I was out with my friends, and we were camped together. So there was um, this news wave that was going on and we were talking about it and uh, a what kind of uh, the Moesha thing. <laughs> yes. So we were talking about it and we were all girls and we had gone there with our own money and we're doing things with our own money. Gone so um, I was taking up a course and at the time I was in um, Kotonou and um, we went to take the French language course, and um, yeah, it started. On and Moesha, on about Moesha. women compromising in, yeah. because they couldn't make ends Get meet with, right. in yes. Ghana. Right. Myself, to a degree, I felt insulted too. Okay. So when I saw the link, I was like, yeah, this is it. And I joined. And so you felt insulted that Moisha had made that comment? Generalized. Generalized it. it. Yes. Oh, so you were one of those who were vocal on social media no, about I it. No, I wasn't. I, honestly, I didn't even post a thing. Comment I just didn't want to talk about it. But I was reading people's posts and someone was like, 
Ah, Moe Shapa, is that how to reveal a secret? <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Baby, it's going on, eh? Then she reveal the secret. Yeah, so I was like, oh, I like this girl. <laughs> so, you know, some of them you just laugh it's over right, it. Right, okay. Others, you like, you know, some people call you boss chick and they think um, this one made it uh, by men helping. Mm -hmm. But boss chick is not um, a, a girl or a woman who... Uh, men sponsor boss chick is somebody who's actually gone through the thick and thin mm. to be where they are mm. um, but you know now there's pride there's quote unquote some pride in being a side chick there are people who are coming out boldly saying that they are side chicks they're proud that they have associations they have social media platforms well we it may work for one. them it may work for them but I think um, it will be belittling me if I if I'm put in the second class, yes. I, 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 yeah, I like that second class. <laughs> On that note, let me go to <laughs> Mrs. Yeah, D. What started it all? What made you and Dr. N.T. Okay, start. I was in America. I think I had gone over. Was it in April? April mm -hmm. for my daughter's um, wedding. My daughter was going to get married, so I went there to make sure that everything was in place. And um, I happened to chance on Christiana Mampo's um, show, and it was about women in different countries and regions of the world. I felt that Christiana Mampo, being a woman, you know, had presented all the others, even though negative, in a positive light. But the one for Ghana to do with black women, she had actually exploited Moesha. But I, also, I was also very, very upset with Moesha because I felt that, you know, no woman should be able to, should do that. Because, well, and then the, because the fact that she generalized... She spoke her truth. She this spoke was her truth. truth. This, but, but, but tainted, but tainted a, lot a lot of other women. Ghanaian women. Ghanaian so she women. didn't say, this is what I do. Yes, but she, she said, made oh, it general. She yes. generalized it. Mm. And for me... Immediately, I got on my WhatsApp and I called Susan and I said, this is ridiculous. <laughs> women, Ghanaian women, are better than this. I want to empower women. Let's start something on social media. So immediately, we post, to, Susan is the guru at uh, <laughs> social media. media. So immediately, Susan, you know. I set up a group. Set and up then a group. I and did the, a Facebook group the, yeah. and then a... Meanwhile, I was supposed to be resting and <laughs> relaxing and taking care of my daughter's wedding. And then I it started just... thinking, let's form, uh, let's get a name. And somehow God just gave me the name Gwen. Yeah, we mm. talked Ghanian about Ghanian women, women and, and then Pound. the comment. Yeah, and we said, oh, it, 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 Gwen. And Gwen. it happens to be a woman's name. So, you know, to me, I believe it was God. Mm. And, and, and the Moesha, case, Moesha situation was what actually started this. Mm. It's the and, catalyst. And it was a catalyst for so it. So could it and be that Mo God used the Moesha yes, incident? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Because, be, yes, because, yes, because so, yes. Mo Moesha's, um, what quote unquote, um, outburst yes. Yes. has helped exactly. direct. To yes. help us to mm. help empower young women Men. and old women. Mm. Because, you know, it's not just young women who need empowerment. Some old women, or even women our ages, are basically also living under oppression and yes. unable to lift themselves up because, you know, society, cultural, cultural. Tra cultural tra traditions and everything. You, you know, know it's, like, it's like when you have a hospital, mm -hmm. you have people coming into the hospital. You don't, you know, and, and emotional wounds are not visible right they are below the the, mm. the skin so yeah. you won't see and somebody with a deadly. broken leg etc mm -hmm. but if you speak to most women we have so many emotional wounds mm -hmm. we have pains you know so literally you don't come bring people into a hospital and then you expect them to um to interact with mm -hmm. the the people who have uh, actually caused the, the, the pain, pain and the wounds you know, just like that. Yeah. Let them get healed. Let them get whole. Let them get empowered. Let them become confident. Let sure. them know who they are, which is what God intends mm -hmm. you to be as a woman. You know, you need to know who you are mm -hmm. so that you can stand shoulder to shoulder with this help mate. Yes. That mm -hmm. and, and, and remember, we're going back to that individual person and that individual, individual person. person. Yes. You've got to be strong. You've got to be strong. 
you come together, you complement each other, you communicate, and you help each other. Wow. Yes, Judith, you wanted to say something. Yes. Uh, what I wanted to say is that um, as women, if we haven't discovered ourselves, like uh, Mrs. D said, and even if it's not the opposite sex, but maybe your own girlfriend, you become, you feel inferior mm. within yourself. Mm -hmm. And that alone, the person hasn't said anything, but yeah. you start hearing voices. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, mm -hmm. you, you are burdening the, 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 your friend mm -hmm. and you can't communicate. Mm -hmm. There's so much stress on the relationship. Mm -hmm. So how do you expect that to work? Mm -hmm. First of all, with your girlfriend, your girlfriend can't understand. Mm -hmm. How much more the opposite sex who oh, is wired differently? Exactly. Dr. Nt, can I take a commitment live on air from you and Mrs. D that next week we'll continue this discussion? Yes. And take it around um, communication and how to, you know, speak up as a woman. On air. <laughs> on air. A commitment okay. from you okay. that yes. will continue we'll next week, yeah. God willing. Yes. No, no problem. Hallelujah, somebody. Mm -hmm. I thought that you <laughs> So I am not, I'm mm -hmm. not taking their conclusion or concluding remarks here. And Judith, you'll be here in the audience. you ask questions, you know, mm -hmm. because um, this is education. And I feel that this education that is very timely. There's so much that is coming, and this is not a program that we want to do touch and go. With our rebranding, we want to make sure people really get the full picture. After watching the show, it shouldn't be, ah, I wish she had asked this, or what. So please, even as you're watching now, send us your questions today. Get on our social media platform, The Standpoint. What question you want us to ask them? concerning communicating, expressing yourself. Sometimes women are afraid because if you let your husband, if you let your boss, if you let your father, you let your mother know how you're feeling, you're afraid of their reaction, the rejection, maybe the worst that will come out of them. You know, so we keep everything together. So um, thank you very much. God willing, next week we are continuing this discussion. And uh, we take a break. When we come back, I'll give you a bit of me. So being here today has taught me a lot about women empowerment. We should step up our games. We should go for what we really want. Mistakes help us learn some more. And as a teacher, I really love it when kids make mistakes, you know, and then we as adults, every individual is supposed to learn from their mistakes. I believe that a woman is total when they know their purpose in life and when they don't wait to be validated. is one of the programs where I don't even know what to say in a bit of me, honestly, because I have learned a lot. I have rediscovered myself. I have been encouraged and I have been empowered because I have understood that it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to admit your shortfalls your shortcomings. It is okay to get angry. It is okay to learn from your partner. It is okay to compromise. It's okay to sacrifice for your partner, for your family, for your work. And God moves in mysterious ways. And that our sacrifices and the things that we sometimes cry through because we feel that we are being compelled to do it. He doesn't take it for granted. Amen. But most importantly, we must learn to communicate, to have a sit down and have an agreement. You need to understand why I need to do this. Why I have to sacrifice at this time for this. Why it has to be me 
Though it's okay to be selfish sometimes. Always, always think about the other person. For the greatest love is the one who sacrifices for the good of others. For the greater good. So woman, stop crying. What have you had to sacrifice in the past? That it didn't go well. That you've been betrayed despite the sacrifice. That you've been taken for granted. No show of gratitude. You feel being trampled upon. Rise up, woman. Look up to the man up there. He hasn't forgotten about you. He's seen it all. He knows it all. Get ready to accelerate. Get ready to take off for the God that I believe in. The man that has done so many things that I cannot tell it all. He will never forsake you. He's got you covered. Rise up. Smile. Dust up. Dress up. Step up. For you are ready to take off. Thanks for watching. See you same time next week. We are going to have part two. This season, we will learn and we'll be on the move. Bye for now.